I'm happy to be here. Uh, it's been a while. Last time I was here was in October 2019. And at the time we were concluding the Horizon 2020 program. So now we have this new program, Horizon Europe. And today my objective is twofold. One is to try to highlight what are the current opportunities given the current status of Canada uh, within Horizon Europe. And then also uh, explain to you what would be um, uh, the advantages, the benefits of Canada becoming an associated country to Horizon Europe, because at the moment there are negotiations ongoing uh, for that to happen. So that would be basically a game changer uh, for Canada's uh, uh, opportunities within the program. So I'm just going to start uh, the presentation. Um, The slides are not moving. Oh, here it is. So first of all, uh, to provide you a bit of the policy context uh, within which uh, uh, Canada operates and EU Canada cooperate, um, there's been a new Canada summit in 2021. That was the latest uh, summit. Uh, the joint statement particularly made reference to the importance of uh, uh, research and innovation uh, cooperation and mentioned for the first time uh, the possibility of Canada's association to the program with exploratory talks starting. Uh, then we also have an important forum, which is the EU-Canada Joint Science and Technology Cooperation Committee. Uh, the last one took place in October. This committee takes place regularly uh, within the uh, uh, EU-Canada Science and Technology Bilateral Agreement basically to take stock where our cooperation is in different uh, research areas and to decide what are the, the priorities for the next uh, period moving forward. Then there has been important developments also on the Canadian side, because as you might recall, in 2019, uh, Prime Minister Trudeau announced a dedicated funding mechanism uh, for Canadian researchers for the following five years, 50 million. Um, and this has been managed uh, by the CRCC, the Canadian Research Coordination Committee. And there have been two, let's say, two um, allocations of, of this 50 million. The first one was 10 million, second one 40 million, and it's ongoing. So these are funds available for Canadian researchers uh, who are successful in uh, Horizon Europe um, proposal uh, applications. <clears throat> and I understand uh, the deadline has been prolonged uh, until the 30th of September. Uh, this is just to allow uh, Canadian researchers to access this funding while these negotiations are ongoing so that there is no gap, let's say, to support uh, the researchers. And, and then, of course, uh, the possibility of association, as I mentioned to you, these negotiations are ongoing. So uh, first, I'll, I'll give you a brief overview of Horizon Europe. So what, what is it? Well, it's a very large program. Uh, it's the largest international uh, research and innovation program in the world, 95.5 billion over seven years. We're now already in the third year. Uh, this is about 130 billion Canadian approximately. Um, yes, let's skip over. So what are the main uh, guiding principles of this program? There, well, there's obviously a commitment to openness because it's completely open to international uh, participation. Uh, values and principles such as, for example, the defense of academic freedom, uh, the commitment to open science, um, <clears throat> the use of um, uh, science diplomacy as an important tool uh, in uh, relationships between uh, the EU and our partners. And then also very importantly, I would mention pool global efforts to tackle global challenges. That is really the, the main objectives for opening up the program more and more. So uh, what are the international cooperation aspects uh, of Horizon Europe? Well, I just mentioned the main one. So uh, it's to tackle together uh, global challenges. So as a result, you will see within the program, within the calls, uh, that there are intensified targeted actions. So certain countries are, are, are mentioned uh, specifically, specifically in the calls, whether it is a bilateral focus or it can also be multilateral 
initiatives. So as I just mentioned, Horizon Europe by default is open to almost all countries. Uh, so any consortium, and I'm talking here about the collaborative projects, can include third country partners. Um, it's also non-discriminatory. Researchers and innovators of any nationality can apply for grants. So I'm talking here about the individual grants, the Marie Sklodowska Curie Actions and the Euro, uh, European Research Council grants. And then Horizon Europe also offers this uh, uh, opportunity to be associated to the program. So the novelty with Horizon Europe is that while in the past uh, associated countries status was mostly reserved to people, uh, to, to countries that were uh, in the close proximity of the EU, so neighboring countries. Uh, so I'm thinking Eastern Europe, uh, Norway, Israel, Switzerland. Uh, within Horizon Europe, there's been a new step. So we've decided, you know, if we want to tackle global challenges, we should also include, give this opportunity to our key partners. And I'm thinking here, obviously, about Canada, uh, Australia, uh, New Zealand, Japan, Korea, to be able to, to associate to the program. So as you can see, for the time being, we have 16 countries that are associated to Horizon Europe. Uh, negotiations underway. Uh, New Zealand, well, they're concluded. Uh, so New Zealand is an associated country to Horizon Europe. Uh, Canada, the negotiations are ongoing, and I'll tell you more about that later. And Japan, we've just uh, opened exploratory talks with them. And also UK is in the process of, of becoming associated. So how does it work for the funding? Well, there are different categories. Uh, so there are the ones who are automatically eligible for EU funding. And obviously these are all the EU member states plus the associated countries. And of course, low and middle income countries. So there's a list of many countries, mostly developing countries um, that are eligible for funding when they're successful in their applications. And the other ones are, are not. And currently, Canada is part of that group of countries, industrialized countries, that cannot uh, get automatic funding from the European Commission. Um, so uh, there's exceptions on a case-by-case -case basis. This means that when the participation of a Canadian researcher or research institution is deemed to be absolutely necessary uh, to the success of the project, so you're bringing a unique expertise or you have a, you know, a state-of-the-art facility that they don't have in Europe, then the European Commission will fund your project. And so, but then you have to motivate, uh, you have to make your case, and then the evaluators would decide whether you, you can benefit from that exceptional fund. Sometimes it's also specified in topic calls uh, that you can get funding, but that I haven't seen that for Canada uh, in the past. So that would be something that uh, has happened, but for other, other, other countries. And then there's the co-funding mechanisms. Uh, so I already mentioned to you at the beginning of the presentation that's within the NFREF, the New Frontiers uh, in Research Fund. Um, there's the Horizon Global Platform. So that's, that's the co-funding mechanism that Canada has. I think it's uh, $250,000 over two years. That would be, uh, yeah, the co-funding mechanism for Canadian researchers successful in their applications at the moment. So th these are a bit the options. So as I mentioned again, uh, we also have targeted international cooperation actions which are uh, uh, appearing in the various calls. So there's flagging of call topics specifically relevant and that's uh, based on strategic thematic areas so specific topics. It can be geographical areas, so it could be, you know, I don't know Japan, uh, Korea, and in North America, often it would be Canada, US. Uh, it could be also within multilateral initiatives, main multilateral in initiatives, let's say energy, climate, uh, or health, or collaboration with key partners and that would be specifically with, with, with one country so Canada so in the call you would have a reference there we would really like to see proposals submitted by Canada um, sometimes it has happened in the past too that uh, it was a requirement so that 
the participation without the participation of that country, uh, then the project will not go ahead. So that's an even stronger requirement. Um, so I'm going to move on to the next. Um, so again, association to Horizon Europe, I've already mentioned to you a little bit how that works. Um, so the, the, the novelty with Horizon Europe is just to include third countries that have good uh, science, technology, and innovation capacity, commitment to a rules-based open market economy, and that promote policies to improve economic and social well-being of citizens. So Canada is part of that category there. Now, at this point, I would have to have a slide which uh, basically gives you a snapshot of Horizon Europe, the structure of the program. For some reason, unfortunate reason, I've deleted it by mistake, so I don't have it, but Jackson has it, so later on you will be able to see it. But just to say, uh, the structure of Horizon Europe basically replicates the one of Horizon 2020. There's three main pillars. One focusy, focusing pillar one, mostly on uh, <clears throat> individual grants, fundamental research. It's the Marie Sklodowska Curie Actions and the European Research Council grants. Then you have the pillar two, which is the gro global challenges. And there are six different clusters there, so different uh, research uh, areas. And those are for collaborative projects. And finally, there's a third pillar which uh, focuses on innovation. So this is a nutshell. Um, so as I said, pillar one, it's the individual grants, uh, Marie Sklodowska Curie Actions, this is the main mobility instrument, and there are various uh, declinations of, of, of this uh, instrument here. I won't go into the um, details, just to mention that perhaps the postdoctoral fellowships are those uh, most known, and uh, maybe Jackson, if he has a little bit more time, he can get into that more. Um, so we have incoming and, and outgoing. So for researchers going to Europe and for researchers from Europe going abroad. And then we have the European Research Council grants, uh, which are very large grants, which fund the groundbreaking uh, research. So fundamental research is completely bottom up. Uh, so you come up with your own uh, proposal, your own idea. And uh, the funding is also, um, a function uh, of the experience of the researcher. So according to the, you know, how many years after the PhD and so on. And you can also have uh, synergy grants within these grants, which bring together uh, two to four um, principal investigator, investigators with their teams um, to address even larger challenges. And then those can go up to 10 million euros for five years. Um, this is just to give you a quick snapshot of uh, how much international cooperation uh, is present within the various six clusters of Pillar 2. Again, this is collaborative research. Uh, this is just some data. So we're around, overall, 22% of the calls include uh, a reference to, to uh, the importance and need of international cooperation. Again, I must underline, though, that this doesn't mean that all the other calls are not open to international participation. Participation. They're all open. You can apply to all of them, well, except for some restrictions on certain areas of the program, uh, strategic, strategic, strategic interests of the EU uh, are deemed to, to be you know, um, defended there, so there's less opening. But all calls are open. So this, these 22% are the ones who are explicitly calling for international cooperation. Now, the next set of slides, I won't go into detail of them because I've basically identified some of the topics within the various clusters of Pillar 2 that specifically target Canada. So you can see here, for example, in the digital industry and space, you have a lot of AI, you have digital. Um, and then cluster five, climate, energy, mobility, uh, you can see again, um, you know, what are the main topics that, that uh, target Canada in particular. Um, and then again, these, these calls uh, and these topics, they're part of the work program of uh, Horizon Europe for 2023, 2024. I haven't said that, I'm saying it now. That's how the, pro the program is organized in 
work program. So there was a work program for 21, 22, the first two years. Currently we're in the work program 23, 24, next two years. And then probably we'll have a, the last one covering the last three years from 25 to 27. So these work programs are, are, are publicly available. You can download them from the, the internet. Um, they have the rationale for the calls and all the, all the calls are there. So you can go find them with a you know, word search, Canada. You find those who specifically target Canada. So this is the one in cluster five, in climate energy mobility. Then in cluster six, these again are calls that uh, ask for Canada's participation or invite, let's say not ask, invite Canada's participation. Uh, microbiome, ocean, uh, ocean science, um, yeah, supporting the All Atlantic Ocean Research and Innovation Alliance. That's, that's the more multilateral um, endeavor. Very important. That was actually created by the EU, Canada, and the US, and now it has uh, expanded to all Atlantic. I know here we are in the Pacific, but there, there, there's some you know, uh, research interests and challenges that are overlapping. And then, as I mentioned, the multilateral initiative. So you know, for the green transition in global health, uh, there are many calls touching upon these. And obviously, Canada is a, an active member of all of these. So obviously, if even if Canada is not specifically mentioned, but these initiatives are mentioned, it means that we would like to see Canadian researchers respond to the calls. So how do you participate? Well, uh, in the collaborative research projects, you have the minimal configuration is three uh, participants. So one has to be from one member state of the EU, and the two other ones can be either from the a new member states or from an associated country. So this is the minimal configuration. And then you can add, you can add the Canadian team and you can add the US team, a uh, Nigerian team, a Japanese team. And often these are, are quite large, large projects, I would say. So on average, you have perhaps 10 to 15 uh, partners in a consortium. But the minimal configuration is that if you want to do something, if you want to respond to a call, you have to find three. Uh, this page basically just uh, is a snapshot of the EU funding and tenders portal. That's where you go and you find all the information about the calls. Uh, you can also uh, find information about potential partners uh, in specific research areas that have participated in the program. If you don't have those contacts, those networks already, that could be a starting point. I mean, this is the most difficult starting point, but that, that is there. There's a database uh, that you can draw upon. And then the following slides uh, are basically just links that can be also useful. Um, and uh, we will share the, 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 the presentation so you can look into it in more detail. Now, the other parts, the important part is about the, um, what, what is going on with the association uh, negotiations and uh, what would be the benefits? What, what would actually change for Canada if Canada were to be associated to the program? Well, first of all, um, Canadian researchers and research institutions would gain direct access uh, to the 27 EU member states and 16 associated countries, uh, researchers, research institutions, uh, um, private companies, all the research landscape. They would be part of it directly. Um, secondly, um, Canada would have the same rights and obligations as all the member states and the other associated countries, uh, there's no additional requirements that would be imposed. Then there's an efficiency multiplier effect, meaning in terms of uh, administrative and fi financial arrangements, uh, there's nothing additional that you would have to do. You could just apply to Horizon Europe and then uh, that's the only, let's say, administrative step that you need to do. R right, right now, you first you have to apply to Horizon Europe, and then if you're successful, you have to go to the NFREF, the Horizon Global Platform, and try to get the matching funding or the co-funding from, from, uh, from the Tri-Council. Um, another advantage would be that you would be able to sit in the program committees which uh, devise these uh, work programs as an observer. 
So you will be able to sit there, you will be able to have, uh, to influence, let's say the discussion. Uh, you wouldn't have the votes, but you could influence those who vote in, in, your, in your direction. So to, you know, to uh, support what are your research priorities, your, your opinions uh, in this. So the work programs then would be able to reflect more the interests of Canadian research that way. And finally, uh, you could also uh, tap into a support system of uh, uh, national contact points. Uh, that used to exist before uh, for Canada. Uh, at the moment, we don't have national contact points. Um, there's been a transition for us in 2020 to Horizon Europe, COVID. Uh, but certainly, if Canada were to be associated, you would need such a strong support system because there would be a learning curve. And basically, this uh, support system of national contact points would provide personalized assistance, uh, you know, information about how to apply, which calls are coming out in your specific area of research of interest. So they would have, you know, specialized uh, knowledge of, of the program itself. So all of this basically to say that uh, it would be a completely different uh, situation for Canada vis-a-vis -vis the program. And of course, I didn't mention the most important thing, automatic funding, you will get funded from the program. Um, so where are we right now? Well, we, we are in the middle of negotiations. Uh, they started uh, at the beginning of the year. We're now, we'll have the fourth round at the end of the month. And um, our objective is to conclude the negotiations by the end of the year so that Canada can be an associated country by the 1st of January, 2024. So for the next four years. And that would be, there would be provisional application uh, of, of the agreement. So it would be immediate effect. So let's see, let's hope that these uh, negotiations actually, you know, uh, advance quickly and we can conclude them quickly so that we can get into this new, uh, this new world. So this is it. Afterwards. Uh, thank you very much. I'm really happy to be here today virtually at the University of British Columbia. Uh, and I think it's, it's a real treat for everyone in the audience, uh, both in person and virtually, uh, to have Luigi there on campus. And I'm sorry, I can't be there. Um, but I'm hoping to give a very express version of an overall introduction to our UX of services. For context, I think uh, Luigi does handle so many portfolios and does so much good work. Uh, and Canada is such a big country, an important country research-wise, that uh, to have one person sharing a lot on research innovation can be quite challenging. So he somehow does it successfully. Um, it does an amazing job. But you can think of uh, my colleague and I, we're based in the US, but we cover all of Canada and the United States. And you can think of, think of us as sort of your information uh, support and team on the ground. Uh, providing access to some questions to your specific answers, but then also uh, general information on Horizon Europe and transatlantic uh, research cooperation and collaboration. So I'll share my screen in just a moment. I'll ask uh, the, my great hosts to um, just speak out loud or send a message in the chat if there's any technical issues. Um, bear with me here. So thank you very much. And then um, I'm also asking Matt and Emily to please share a PDF of this presentation afterwards. So if you're um, trying to jot down the long name or URL of anything you see, don't worry. Uh, I'll share a couple URLs to, to your, access, uh, your access website and social media channels afterwards uh, or during the chat after my presentation. But any link you see here in the presentation, uh, you can just click on in the PDF that you get uh, afterwards. So I believe I uh, invite Luigi if he wants to say anything uh, out loud. This is the sort of the very typical umbrella slide that if you're a visual learner like me, uh, gives a really quick overview into what Horizon Europe is. So for our purposes at your access, and I'll give you an introduction in just a minute into, into uh, what we do, uh, we primarily promote and highlight pillars one and two. So just to reiterate what Luigi said, um, probably with almost the exact same wording, pillar one, for the most part, there's many declinations of these different funding schemes and mobility schemes. Uh, but you have the ERC grants, that first bar under Pillar 1, um, which are both those and the Marie Sklodowska Career Actions, uh, which are postdoctoral fellowships are the most popular ones, are bottom up at the individual level uh, for researchers looking to go to Europe for a period of two to three years, uh, or uh, North America or any, any country in the world outside of Europe um, for one to two years, and then the, the one-year return phase in Europe. Um, I'll, I'll defer to the specific... Uh, Time frame within each uh, program within ERC and MSCA. Uh, I'm, I'm just going very quickly off memory, but those are two very great ones for, for uh, PhDs looking for postdoctoral opportunities, postdocs looking for another postdoc. Um, and then the, you, there's more or less a graduated level of 
uh, if you are a late stage professor um, for far along in your career and you want to start a team, there are ERC grants for you uh, to create doctoral networks, for example, um, and things like that. And then Luigi mentioned in pillar two, those six clusters, these are the international research consortia that are top down in the sense that the European Commission defines what the societal challenge is. Uh, and you, along with your consortia of three European based partners at a minimum, uh, put in your application together to, to be the ones granted to solve that. And then uh, hopefully, if and when Canada associates to, to receive funding. Um, but he mentioned the NFRF and all these other great supplemental funding and co-funding opportunities. So I think even if you're ready as soon as tomorrow to begin moving forward, putting together a proposal, um, you, you can do so. And you can follow us at your access for, we either will host our own matchmaking and brokerage events uh, or give you how to and how to navigate the European Commission websites for finding people who've expressed their own interest and either you contacting them or putting your own, putting your own, uh, throwing your hat in the ring, so to say, for others to contact you by listing yourself publicly. And uh, there are also other great organizations in Canada that will do matchmaking events. Um, there's one as soon as June 21st from ECCIR that I'm happy to, uh, to share a link with anyone that gets in touch with me afterwards. And they'll do, lately they've been doing cluster specific uh, brokerage events. So if you can identify which cluster, perhaps which calls are most relevant uh, to you or your team, we can we can um, help find the right the right events for you. Uh, for our purposes, pillar three and the widening at the very bottom are not exactly things we promote. So I'll just uh, move on from those. So to give the very short version of what your access is, the overall project is called your access researchers in motion. Uh, you can think of it is being a project in two halves. There's the very large uh, half, which is your access Europe within every European country. And this is the 27 EU member states that Luigi's been talking about, but then also all of those countries he's been mentioning that are associated. So they're not part of the EU, but for research and innovation, they pay into the budget. Um, so the current seven year program, as he mentioned, is Horizon Europe. Previously, it was Horizon 2020. Uh, so what happens is the each country on a bilateral basis with the European Commission will negotiate access to the program. And uh, as Luigi mentioned, these there might be slightly different details into how each one's associated uh, for example, in the case of Canada, it is pillar two only. So when we talked about these great bottom-up uh, grants and fellowships, primarily for individual researchers, nothing would change in that sense. Canada would not exactly be, uh, quote unquote, part of Europe. A Canadian researcher or researcher of any nationality based in Canada uh, could go to Europe for that, that short period and then, uh, and then return afterwards. And Canada, UBC, for example, can continue to receive um, researchers coming from Europe looking to have UBC or any Canadian or university in the world uh, as the host of the two for their one to two years outside of Europe. Uh, so we, uh, I'll clarify if it's not evidently, uh, if it's not extremely obvious already, we are a project, an official project or initiative of the European Union. Uh, so we are not um, consultants that found an opportunity to provide consulting services and uh, try to charge money for our services. Everything we do is free. The European Commission uh, pays our salary. So we're really the information source on the ground trying to uh, echo and highlight a lot of the work that Luigi and his counterparts uh, around the world do promoting EU research funding and collaboration. And we also act, we're not an uh, official national contact point, as he mentioned, uh, which I hope that if and when Canada associates and then gets uh, NCPs uh, or gets more NCPs, because I believe currently there is one for health and health only, uh, you, will, you will have more. But in the meantime, we act as a sort of unofficial NCP in the sense that any and all questions you can bring to us, uh, maybe half the time we'll have an answer for you right away, whether it's a specific question or a more general question. And those times we don't, we'll connect you to a European-based NCP. And if you have a particular country of interest, if you if it's specific to your research field, we'll connect you with one of the, the officials in Europe who does have an answer to that. Um, I've been mentioning before the European half and then the worldwide half of, of the EURAXIS project. So within Europe, there's over 600 what they call support centers. So these are uh, representatives based traditionally at universities, but they can also be at other private research organizations um, and institutions. Uh, and they have regional expertise, uh, functional expertise in specific fields. So there's an NCP database uh, and your access support center database where you can more or less filter down your what you're looking for and find the right uh, points of contact to answer those questions for you. So our aim is to support your research career. You may be a Canadian or international researcher based in Canada who does not want to leave Canada. Uh, I know we talk about a lot about trying to promote uh, careers in Europe. Regardless, the European Commission is all about supporting research and mobility. So that means both directions or all directions. Uh, so if you have any questions, including if you just want to stay put where you are, but you want uh, career development support in your in your research career, in addition to getting it from UBC, you can also think of us as, uh, as one additional resource for you. So as, as I said, just to highlight again, everything we offer is free. Um, so please don't hesitate to share your questions, no matter how specific or general they are. So I really look forward to the Q&A. I think having a live chat can be a bit a bit more uh, interesting and dynamic than, than this sort of top-down presentation. But I do want to give a really quick overview into our website. So the 
titles I'm going to show here are just a quick uh, overview of that horizontal bar you see at the very top of the Reactus website when you visit the page. So the jobs and funding portal, that's our bread and butter. That is, uh, if you and your favorite search engine type in your access, it's the very first thing that comes up. And this is a live database uh, with human moderation uh, and sort of content curation. Uh, but anyone is is open and invited to create an account and then post opportunities. And this is not limited only to the EU member states and associated countries. So if you were, for example, to go right now and just click on Canada in the filter section, you'd see out of a very large number of opportunities, a small number um, of Canadian institutions that have uh, registered, they have some European connection or awareness of your access, and they've uh, registered for free and, and posted their opportunities there. And because the European Commission is all about um, supporting research and mobility in, in both directions, there, there's no reason why uh, we, we limit it to Europe. In that very same sense and with the same interface, there's the partnering, partnering tool and hosting database. So this is where uh, UBC, for example, could register their account and then post their hosting offers because in these, these two pillar two, pillar, excuse me, pillar one mobility schemes, ERC grants, and MSCA fellowships that we've been mentioning. Uh, an applicant will apply for these, these really great funding sources with a letter of support from a host institute. So this is where if uh, someone is based in Europe and they want to go to Canada, uh, they may not necessarily know which university they want to go to or how to find one that has uh, expertise in their research area. So they would go on the hosting database, uh, search Canada, or maybe even search the research field if they're looking um, to go outside of Europe and enter, uh, do a research program in biology, they may click through the filters and then find out that UBC shows up there uh, and then contact the appropriate uh, head of department or, or PI offering this uh, and then therefore get that letter of support and apply. Um, and I'll just add one really interesting feature is that this funding is portable. It's attached to the researcher uh, themselves. So therefore, if, uh, if you're sending researchers to Europe and they find University X in country Y is just not the right fit for them, they can continue to take the funding they received and, and find another host as a two. So um, in that sense, you can think of uh, a lot of freedom that comes with it. It's quite prestigious on the other end as well, because if you're UBC and you're receiving a paid MSCA fellow or ERC grantee, um, firstly, the acceptance rates are, are uh, it's very competitive, I'll say. The statistics are open and published uh, after the calls uh, fully close and the results are announced. So you can get a sense for certain demographic information and sense of transparency and openness. The European Commission um, shares this information. Uh, however, it can also help you strategize your, your application, get a sense for, for how your application might hold up. Uh, but the salary is paid by the EU. So the university, perhaps for, other than small administrative costs, you're not paying their salary and you're getting a very uh, smart researcher, let's say, for free. Uh, I mentioned we do career development because my colleague and I took over from our predecessors at the beginning of 2020. Almost all of our work time has been during differing levels of the pandemic. So therefore, almost everything we do is recorded and archived online. So I'll share in, in the chat a link to our social media channels. Uh, we share emails twice a month with different events, both in person and virtual. Um, news that's research related or transatlantic uh, commission news uh, related. For example, I think last month we shared information on Canada and France signing the first S&T agreement that was bilateral between the two countries, um, and then also specific funding opportunities. Sometimes we'll just generally let people know that one of the ERC or MSCA calls has opened, um, including supplementary events on how to prepare your application, but then also we'll have extremely specific calls in a particular country at a particular institute, institute um, both European Commission overarching funding, but then also national funding or specific openings uh, or scholarships or funding opportunities within individual universities. So Think of Us is your promotion tool in both directions. If you are looking to attract Europeans uh, to UBC, I encourage any, any professors or, or um, offices, research offices, international relations offices to be in touch with us. We'll give you a quick overview on how to use the website and how to uh, try to attract some talent. Information assistance, I mentioned those 600 service centers throughout Europe, so we will connect you to people that have expertise in, in the regions you're interested in. And I've been talking a lot about the large number of people in Europe. There's a team of just under 20 of us uh, that make up your access worldwide. We're spread over nine hubs in different either countries or regions or continents. So my colleague, Dr. Daria Bukinar Karajan, she and I are based in Washington, D.C., covering all of Canada and the U.S., uh, and we look forward to, we have multiple um, trips to Canada coming up in the second half of the year. So we, I don't know when we'll see you specifically, but uh, if you subscribe to our, our bi-monthly flash my emails, uh, you'll definitely be notified in advance. So the European Commission has announced uh, an innovation talent platform. And at this stage, they've just shared the uh, initial ideas into how your access will be a part of this uh, talent platform where researchers can basically plug in, upload their profiles. There is um, a Europass format. It's a, it's a European format 
for your CV, you type it in once, and then for any European job you apply to um, within academia or outside of it, it's uh, standardized. There's a lot of different tools. Basically, keep your eyes on your Access website and the Innovation Talent platform, because later this year and next year, some more announcements will be coming. Um, just a really quick uh, point on the numbers. So if you go to the Access job portal, which I described as the bread and butter earlier, you'll see at any given point, generally, my last check, I, I tend to see on a daily basis between 10 and 13,000 uh, positions. Uh, Within those positions, there's multiple offers oftentimes. So sometimes depending on which section of the website you're seeing, you'll see it's between 40 and 50,000. There's a small technical difference between positions and offers. I just want to give this quick clarification so you don't think my numbers are, are off by five folds. Um, everything's explained in, in good detail there. And there's a little question mark icon next to all the filters as well when you're searching for opportunities. So you'll have a, a good idea on um, what the technical definitions of certain things are. So if you go to the Access homepage, uh, I mentioned the jobs and funding portal. Uh, the red circle right there just tells you exactly where to click. So I think you're two clicks away at any given moment um, to the database, and you can type in keywords and filter. If you ever have any really specific questions or you want a general overview, I'm happy to record a screencast, send it your way. I can also make a public event for this. Um, I, I really do mean it when I say we're at your service and we want to just um, provide easy access to this information so you can get closer to EU funding or collaboration. Uh, as, as I said before, with that Horizon Europe graphic overview, I'm a visual learner, so I just want to give a quick uh, li alphabetical list of these 43 countries that have your access national portals, basically just a website that lists their points of contact on the ground. So these are the 27 EU member states, plus the 16 associated countries, uh, which are countries that have concluded their bilateral negotiation with the Commission to participate in one form or another. Uh, in Horizon Europe. And this also includes Switzerland and the UK, this list, because while they're still in the negotiation process, they were, uh, the UK was previously an EU member state and Switzerland was previously associated to the, the prior seven-year framework program since research innovation is funded and organized on a seven-year basis uh, with the EU. So they maintain these national portals as they continue to, to uh, be involved in this. So I would say if you have any country specific questions you have at your service, your access Turkey, your access Tunisia for some of these associated countries, uh, and then your access France, your access Finland for member state countries. Um, half the time we'll end up connecting you with your access points of contact or Horizon Europe NCPs that are based on a certain cluster uh, or, or a certain country. That said, come to your come to your, come to us with your questions and we'll we'll get it to the right people. Um, some of the information that these that these organizations offer are more or less consistently across these 18 different topics. Sometimes they, they do it in more or less, uh, but it's three different categories that are more or less the logistical aspects of um, moving from one country to another. And I'll say that Europeans moving to neighboring countries, I mean, you would think a Spaniard moving to Portugal or vice versa may have enough cultural familiarity by being uh, neighbors to, to navigate some of these things on their own. They still use these services. So when you're coming from a different continent and perhaps uh, to a country with a different language, uh, these are things that as a researcher, you really just want to hit the ground running and go with your career. Uh, and, and some of these, uh, some of the friction in making a move, their, the European Commission's approach to having these national uh, portals and these points of contact is to uh, reduce that friction and make it easier for you to focus on the move. So if you have a question on how to move to Sweden and get your Canadian diploma recognized, uh, your access to Sweden will get you the, the answer to those questions. So I showed you before on the left-hand side of that horizontal bar up top, the jobs and funding portal. On the right-hand side, if you go to the overarching Your Access homepage, that's where you'll see the Worldwide tab, and you can click North America. Uh, and if you click that big yellow button, sign up and become a member for free, that's the sign up for what we call our bi-monthly flash notes. Uh, we ask several questions just to better understand uh, our, our researchers and people that choose to be a part of the community. But really, you only have to give your name, email address, uh, name and email address if you'd like. That's it. And uh, you can unsubscribe with two clicks if you find these emails are not for you. Uh, but I, I think it's really worth most researchers and uh, administrative staff time just to spend five minutes each email, which again, is just twice a month, um, skimming for a few opportunities and, and seeing if something might be relevant. So I uh, I won't read this, but I'll just leave a quick uh, slide each for the two big mobility schemes in pillar one. Uh, as Luigi mentioned, these bottom up for individual researchers. The criterion for these two uh, funding schemes is uh, excellence. So you, as the individual researcher, propose uh, what your project is, but you're not fitting into other predefined categories. You have to determine which, um, I believe, panel is the right word so the proper evaluators can, can uh, review your application. Uh, but, but that said, for example, the second bullet point here, ERC study grants are extremely popular. These are for people two to seven years post-PhD or with two to seven years uh, work experience. And both the ERC, and I'll, I'll skip to my next slide here, 
and the MSCA, they have points of contact throughout Europe that are frequently partnering with us and working on sort of the North American time zones, the, the four, what I call the four major ones from the east to the west coast. I think Canada will, will probably extend that out a tiny bit um, further in Atlantic Canada. And they, they understand that they might have to work a little bit later than the business hours uh, in the Pacific or in the Atlantic, but they'll find times to, to give info sessions and answer your questions live as well as after the fact. Um, so these postdoctoral fellowships, the second slide here as well, are the, the most well-known and, and popular ones that Luigi mentioned as well. Um, if you have any questions on these, get in touch with us. We just, for example, a week and a half ago, hosted, uh, along with other Euraxis Worldwide Hubs, uh, 20 different countries with universities pitching pitching why they should be your, your host institute for uh, people in the Americas looking to go to, to Europe. So I think I, you've been really generous with your time. I'll try to speed up here and just wrap up in a minute. Um, a quick reminder, what we do, we link you in Canada to Europe one way or another, whether it's about research funding, getting getting your uh, questions answered. We provide specific and general information on these European funding opportunities. And again, it's in both directions. And then research career development. We had, for example, um, in past years, a really great five-part how to get published uh, workshop in, in series and all of those recorded. So you can go in and check those. I would say my call to action would be if there's only one thing you're going to remember or do after this presentation, it's to bookmark and check these three websites. So one is your access. This link will take you to our North America homepage. Uh, the next is the European Commission's funding and tenders portal. This is where you'll find all of these pillar two uh, open calls for Horizon Europe. They published forthcoming ones as well. So even if the date hasn't opened yet, um, the ones that are in the 2023-2024 work package, because Luigi mentioned the seven years is generally broken down into two, two, and, and three years. Um, this is where you can find uh, most or all calls for 2023-2024. Um, and as he mentioned, whether or not they mention international cooperation as uh, being sought, you can always make your pitch to, to justify why a specific call should include uh, you. And then finally, CORDIS. This is the European Commission's database for the primary source for all results from EU-funded projects since 1990. So in particular, in the first few years of Horizon Europe, but then also the previous seven-year framework program, Horizon 2020. If you're interested in finding um, your, your fellow Canadians who were beneficiaries of this, you can go in and then through the country filter, find them and more information about who their um, European-based partners were, just to do some research and, and find um, sort of what your what your colleagues may have, uh, what their application proposals might have looked like. So I'll leave you with this. This email address here reaches my colleague and I together, and we, we aim to get back to you uh, within a couple of business days. And then uh, again, whether we get you in touch with the European-based NPP or have the ability to answer ourselves, we want to be in touch. These are our four social media channels where we're constantly uploading videos and sharing um, specific opportunities. So I would encourage you to subscribe. And uh, if you have your phone in front of you, whether you're there in person or on the screen, you can just um, scan the QR code and hop into our flash note sign up page. I'll leave it up for just a second, but I think um, I, I may be eating away into my Q&A time. So I'll leave it here. Uh, I'll encourage Matt and Emily, if they'd like, you're welcome to keep the recording going. And if the questions are relevant um, to a wider audience, we can share the Q&A as well. Um, but I, I defer to you. So I'll say thank you very much. I'll take a second to, to skim the chat for some questions as well. Um, but I look forward to answering the questions. And I think of us as your access is sometimes a slow burn. You might hop on the jobs and funding portal a little bit later and immediately start looking for opportunities, or you may just wish to, over the course of months, see what kind of opportunities we're highlighting, um, what the typical release cycle is like for some of these fellowships that are either from the EU or from the individual countries themselves. Um, but uh, we're always here at your service, so please, please don't hesitate to, to ask questions. So thank you very much. And also, if, you, if you've thought of questions for Luigi, I think he and I together can can try to get you some answers. Maybe if uh, sometimes I'm shy to ask questions. So if someone's just looking for that extra minute to, to finish the wording and what they want to ask, what I can think to do is um, because I didn't include too many screenshots of the website itself, um, maybe I can spend 30 seconds just navigating um, the website and find something that might be of interest for, for Canadian researchers looking for potential Pillar 2 project partners for specific open calls. So if that sounds good, this will be really quick, but I just want to give people the, the quick tool to see what they would do. Um, so if you can see my screen here, uh, again, funding and tender, I call the funding and tenders portal. If you pop that in your favorite search engine, it should be the first result. Um, there's normally a list of several dozen tiles. You would have to click Horizon for Horizon Europe, and it will take you to this page. If you click View without typing in a search, it will show you all of the past. If you can see my cursor here, current and upcoming uh, calls under Horizon Europe. You can also look at uh, past programs, I believe. So what I'll do is I'll click a random one that's open here. 
the calls, the each call uh, page will have the opening date, the deadline dates, updates, so you can bookmark the page and then find if, if small changes have happened. Um, but then there's some, there's a section for each call called the partner search announcements, and this is where you can find uh, both third countries, EU, uh, Horizon Europe, associated country, and then the member states, regardless of which country they're from, where um, individuals and organizations have registered themselves and put a small amount of information where you could then contact them and, and collaborate on a proposal. For example, this is um, a, a Turkish organization that has identified themselves as an SME, and they're putting in expertise offers that you might, as a, as a consortium, uh, work with them to put your application in. So I'm pretty sure we could download a couple calls as an example and then find that some Canadians have expressed interest here and either proactively or a bit more passively are, are looking to, to network and find opportunities. So I will, in the chat, as an example, share a link to ECCIR's um, cluster-specific uh, matchmaking session that they call um, brokerage events. Um, and you can also go through that and get a sense for how some of these uh, these live events cutting across different time zones work to find potential project partners. But I just give this as a quick example. I'm always happy to record screenshots or, or videos or screencasts uh, if, if it's useful for others. So don't be shy to, to ask what we can, how, how we can help you by email, we'll be in touch. So I, I am happy to read this out loud. Someone asked um, a somewhat specific example, if you would like a German researcher who's a professor and perhaps their grad students or postdocs to come to UBC uh, for collaborative work, what is what are the best programs to look at for this? Um, I, I don't want to give an off the cuff answer, so maybe I'll defer to Luigi, but I would say within ERC and or MSCA, there will be something. I'm a lot more familiar with the initial ones for individual researchers. There are some for teams, um, but I, I want to go through the, the formal uh, explanation of each one before I speak to that. So maybe Luigi has, has a quick thing uh, in mind, but I will also say that in addition to these primary pillars, uh, first and second pillar of Horizon in Europe, there is a lot of there are a lot of EU funded projects that offer some sort of benefit like this that if you see slowly a bit passively what we're publishing. Um, one thing that might be of interest is there's a suite of projects called NGI next generation Internet um, Two that come to mind for North America are NGI Sargasso um, and NGI enrichers. Um, the latter is, for example, where Canadian or American uh, institutes, they don't have to be universities, they can be private sector but uh, organizations can receive paid fellows from Europe for three to six months if they're in certain sort of technology or technology adjacent uh, fields like um, 5G, 6G internet, I think blockchain is one of them, artificial intelligence. Um, it's not necessarily all so tech focused, but but as I said, sort of tech adjacent. And the other one is for uh, Canadian Americans to do collaborative projects with Europeans. The Europeans are the ones that get funded, so you, you could find funding within Canada or elsewhere, but you sort of Rest assured that your counterparts already have funding for their half of the project. Um, and these are, I mean, on the grand scheme of things, quite quite small projects, but really nice things that if, in, unless you happen to see Luigi or us promoting it, um, or your European partners mentioning it to you, you may not be aware of it. So that's why I always encourage the five minutes twice a week, just quickly quickly skimming what we're what we're putting out there by email. Um, I will give more comprehensive later by email if you reach me. Um, but I, I also want to give Luigi an opportunity to speak to that as well. No, I, I don't have anything else to add. I mean, I'm going to have the same reflex of pointing to Marie Skodowska Curie, actually, the ERC grants. Yeah. Thank you so, so much. Thank for you. Thank you. And thanks Thank you very much. much.